But before we get into a full panel discussion, we want to give you a lay of the land, a sense of where we are on the question of nuclear energy procurement by this country. Energy regulator NERSA has given conditional approval to government's plan to procure 2,500 megawatts worth of electricity from nuclear technologies. This confirms that nuclear is firmly back on the table in this country. During former President Jacob Zuma's administration, nuclear energy was considered too costly on the public purse and there were concerns it would be procured corruptly. Joining me now to discuss this is Professor Samson, uh, I don't think I, yeah, Professor Samson Mampueli uh, joins me, an energy expert from the University of Stellenbosch, Liz McDade from Outa, uh, the organization undoing tax abuse, Zizamel Mbambo from the Department of Mineral Resources, he is the DDG for nuclear there, and uh, as well as the NEXA chairperson, uh, David Nichols. Thank you so much for your time, all four of you. So, uh, yeah, uh, it's great to have all of you all at the same time so that we can bash it out and by the time we are done uh, South Africans will have a good sense of where things stand we will have given them the intel uh, on this issue of nuclear and the agreement that we had was that we we'll start with you uh, Mr. Mbambo from you know to give us a, a lay of the land um, and as far as nuclear is concerned from your leading of the nuclear projects and and the stream uh, within the Department of Mineral Resources and Energy what is your understanding of where we stand on this question of whether to acquire nuclear energy or not did uh, NERSA give you that approval is that approval final or is it conditional Good afternoon, uh, uh, Tulasis and uh, the members of the panelists, and uh, good afternoon to the viewers at home. Yes, uh, I think uh, it, it's a very important conversation we are dealing with here, and I would like to give a perspective so that it can uh, contextualize the discussion. So when we look into the policies of government, there's a policy of nuclear energy policy of 2008, uh, which set out the government vision for the implementation of the nuclear new build uh, to make sure that uh, we become self-sustainable as a country in as far as the implementation of the program in all the different uh, areas of the nuclear fuel cycle. So that, that's where we start in terms of doing this work. We want to become self-sufficient in the use of peaceful use of nuclear technology. But in, in that policy as well, there is a, a very important principle number three, which states that nuclear shall be, shall be part of uh, South Africa's uh, strategy for climate change mitigation. We pursue nuclear in that context with a view that nuclear has to be a, a solution that must unlock South Africa's uh, commitment to the climate change agreement being a clean uh, technology that will contribute substantially in reducing our uh, carbon emissions in the country. And then fast forward the country then has a, an integrated resource plan of uh, 2019, which is a 20-year plan comprising of different uh, energy technologies for generation of electricity. And it's a very impressive uh, plan that comprises of nuclear, coal, gas, renewables, hydro, and other forms of uh, uh, electricity generation technologies. In as far as nuclear is concerned, in that particular integrated resource plan, there is decision number eight. This decision is very uh, instructive in that it, it uh, directs the government to commence with a preparation for the nuclear new build to the extent of 2,500 megawatts of uh, nuclear energy at a pace and a scale that the country can afford yeah. Because it is a no-regret option in the long term. 
Sure, and we've no. heard those Thomas words before. Um, I'm sorry to jump in there, DDG, because we, uh, I'm going to have to try and get the conversation moving along before we get into a, a, a broader discussion with the other panelists. But I wanted to check then uh, with that context and background that you've given at a policy level as well as the integrated resource plan uh, that you talk about of 2019. Where do we stand now? What, what is the meaning of the decision by uh, NERSA? Um, just recently, and I think it's really a committee of NASA. How are we to understand? I, it, was that the green light for nuclear energy procurement? And what's the size of what we are procuring? Uh, very good question. Yes. So as you've uh, articulated, Mr. Smelane, the energy regulator, NERSA, had uh, concurred with the ministerial determination in terms of Section 34 of the Electricity Regulation Act, Act Number 4 of 2006, to commence with the preparations for the procurement of the 2,500 megawatts from the nuclear energy. So with that decision now, the department is, 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 is going to commence with the planning for the procurement of this uh, 2,500 uh, megawatts capacity from the nuclear energy. Uh, and our plan as a department, we anticipate that uh, uh, by next year, say March 2022, we should be ready to start uh, issuing the request for proposals to the market with an intention to complete the procurement process by 2024. So it's a long-term process. We're dealing here with a very... Uh, important energy technology that requires very careful consideration and it's a long lead technology uh, source up front, with. So the up, front is, up front can south africans trust you to broaden it uh, in terms of where you'll be looking to procure because part of the problem that we had previously <laughs> was that it seemed um, the, the horse had long bolted even before the request for information, etc., cetera, uh, would have gone out. It seemed we were now set. It was going to be Rosatom of Russia, come hello high water. How can South Africans trust you this time around that you've not made up your mind? Yeah, very important. Uh, you know, uh, Tula Sizo, the procurement process in South Africa is governed by the Constitution, Section 217 of the Constitution which uh, direct that the procurement must be open and transparent and cost competitive. And we will be fully complying with that as the department. So we'll follow an open uh, tender process, we'll advertise it, and everybody who has an interest to participate in the program, they will participate. It's going to be a very a thorough, and uh, we're doing our due diligence to ensure that the process is, 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 is transparent, is open, is cost competitive, and it provides the benefit for the South Africans, given that nuclear is one of the key strategic uh, interventions for government yeah. to contribute to the uh, economic uh, reconstruction and recovery plan for the country, and also, and also to ensure the security of energy supply. So two more questions from me, uh, Mr. Mbambo, to you as a way of setting up the background and backdrop for this conversation before we get into the fuller panel discussion. Tell me, what are we looking at in terms of procurement? What are we, we, we use the word procurement. It's a, it's a fancy word. Are we building one big power station that will be 2,500 megawatts um, in terms of its output? Or are we talking what you've come to call modular reactors um, and, and why that choice of one over the other? Very important. If you look into our uh, integrated resource plan, it's very uh, instructive in the sense that it promotes that we should uh, look into modular, uh, small modular reactor technologies. Uh, so, so our inclination would be towards to follow what the, 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 the integrated resource plan is saying, However, we are not uh, ruling out other forms of uh, uh, nuclear technology. So probably we will be looking into a combination that fits within the, 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 the capacity of 2,500 megawatts, which should be 
procured in a manner such that it's on modular forms and the, the cost competitive nature of it is taken on board. And so we're keeping all the options open uh, to Lassizo. However, I must add, there's uh, various uh, competitive advantages that comes with small modular reactors in terms of their deployability and in terms of the economic uh, aspect, the, 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 the cost of the program as well as uh, the schedule in terms of the long lead uh, construction associated with a project of this nature. So we're mm. looking into a massive infrastructural development program that will arise out of this nuclear new build. Thank right. As, as my last uh, backdrop and background setting question then, uh, Mr. Mbambo, show me the money. Where will the money come from? You and I know the state of our, um, you know, our fiscus, the debt to GDP ratios, the uh, various matrices that we measure in as far as public finances are concerned. Look, a few years ago when we would talk about 9.6 uh, gigawatts, 9,600 megawatts that the Zuma administration wanted to procure, we would simply say it would wreck the fiscus. It would destroy our economy. How do we know this won't? Where, where will you get the money from? ESCOM doesn't have it, that's for sure. Yes, I think that's a perfect question you're putting on the table, Mr. Smelan. Uh, as a department, we're fully aware of the dynamics re regarding the various options in which uh, the program of this magnitude can be delivered. And so we are keeping all the options open on the table, and we believe they are very uh, amenable options that are out there in the market that uh, may not overburden the fiscals uh, up front, and we're going to test all of this, and that is why we're going to embark on a procurement process where we will be issuing the proposals so that we determine exactly from the market what are the various uh, options that would make South Africa uh, deploy the program without uh, uh, unnecessary uh, burdening the fiscal? So we're keeping our options op open, but we believe that a program of this magnitude is well within the South Africa's reach in terms of uh, its deployability and the benefit that it will provide okay. to the country. All that right, is why it is a yeah. no-regret option. In other words, it is a good investment for this country. Thank you. All right. All right. Let's pause there with you, Zizamele uh, Mbambo, the DDG for Nuclear Energy at the Department of Mineral Resources and Energy. He will be listening in as we continue with this panel discussion. And if he uh, wants to, he'll be able to then come back towards the end and just make a final input. Stand by. This is the intel. In the next few minutes, the conversation starts in earnest with that backdrop having been, having been painted by Mr. Mbambo there. Uh, I'm with David Nichols from Nexa. Uh, the Nuclear Energy Corporation of South Africa, as well as Liz McDade from Outer and Professor Samson Mampueli in just a moment. <laughs>